Alright. So I have prepared a salt water solution here. This is regular tap water. And that is uh, empty at the moment. Distilled water. So let's disprove some of the myths out there about one guy's colloidal silver is better than the other and all that kind of garbage. Alright, um, let's see if you can see. Start off with the uh, start off with the distilled water solution. It's just plain old distilled water right out of the bottle. You saw it, and we'll put our two leads in the water. Now, this over here is a number of amps traveling through the solution. This is the voltage that we have it at. Right now, I have it set at 14 volts. We can change that to whatever. I'll show you. Alright, there's 29.8. Or 30 volts. Whichever way. We back this down. Doesn't matter. We can do the test of anything. I don't want to forget to change it back because I'm running a uh, 14, 14 volt run over here because I'm testing the voltages. Alright, now, you can see how close these two contacts are. I move them apart, I move them back closer together. Let's see how close I can put it before we register some voltage. Alright. Now, this doesn't register here, but you can see this fluctuating between 0 and 1. That's actually 10 milliamps. Okay, so not very much conductivity because there's not very much particulate matter or solids. Whoops. In there. You know, we can see that with our TDS meter. tap water. This is well water, so it has a few minerals in it. And it still doesn't conduct that much electricity. Pretty close to the tap water. I mean the uh, distilled water. Now what happens if we put this in a solution of salt water? Alright, so 110 basically, roughly 70, uh, 70 to 110 milliamps current. Alright, now that's, I'll move them over here a little bit closer to one another. Whoops, that's just stuck together. So, the colloidal silver is going to make, based on the available current that's going to pass through the solution, this is a heavy, heavy salt solution. So, voltages and amperages don't make that much difference because you're going to get very little anyway. You're going to have very, very small, small micro amounts of current. So, these type power supplies, 9 volt, 400 milliamp, is plenty because we're only using or would be using, well, this 9 volt is probably going to put out about 12 volts. 400 milliamps probably put out 1.2 amps. So, but that would be for a very short period of time before the thing overheated and might fail at that point. So if you just connect those two wires together, you're definitely going to burn the unit out. But, at this rate here, 400 milliamps, if you're only using 10 of it, you're not taxing this. You're not putting a whole lot of pressure on this. 
Okay, but these things are designed to run for a couple of hours, not for not for a day and a half making colonial silver. So sometimes they will burn out. But what's important to know is uh, you got to clean your silver between runs. You can't put an old mocky, you know, because it'll build up a tarnish and oxidation just like silver will if it sits out in the in the weather like, you know, you had to put Tarnex and Brasso and all that on Grandma's silver. Okay, well, you're going to have to keep it clean because with that minute amount of voltage, you're going to think your power supplies are not working. That's one of the reasons why this bad boy is sitting here. And and after I checked all it, when I got this in, had similar results. I went back and checked these, and these are all working. So 9 volt, 400 milliamp, 9 volt, 500 milliamp, 18 volt, uh, 8, 80 80 milliamp, milliamps, 24 volt, 400 milliamps. This one, uh, this is what I'd recommend because they're easy to get a hold of. Um, you can buy them from Harbor Freight, 10 bucks. That's a uh, um, power supply for an 18 volt uh, drill, you know, cordless drill. And it actually puts out 24, it says 24 volts, 400 uh, milliamp, but it's capable of 35 volts. In other words, it runs 35 volts. And we'll put out up to 1.2 amps. So pulling 10 milliamps off of it's not going to be causing any problems. All right. So there goes the power supply. So don't listen to someone. They tell you that they've got all this that this fancy thing, and unless they're splitting atoms, you know what I mean. They're using the same either DC. 90% of them using DC uh, for their power supplies, and if you're using AC, some kind of microwave type deal or something like that. Yeah, you're doing the same thing. You're creating what they call ionic silver. It is a colloidal silver because colloid, if you look at it, up the definition to it, it's particles suspended in either a liquid or gas gaseous uh, solution. So it is true colloidal silver. People are now, because people have been saying, you know, mine's better than yours, yours is this, mine's this. You now they've gotten in this argument versus ionic versus colloidal. Doesn't make any difference. Does it work? Okay, they both work. Colloids are a conglomeration of those silver ions, so it's going to be a larger particle. We're trying to get to the cell wall of bacteria and viruses. These are very, very small bacteria. You can see with a really good microscope that if you want to spend a couple of hundred bucks, you could get one. But to see a virus, unless you want to give up your next Audi car or your next good Chevrolet or Ford truck or something, you're not going to have a microscope that can see it. So that's a bunch of hogwash. You can make this stuff at home with a 9 volt battery. You can make it with any of these power supplies. You can get something fancy like this. It doesn't matter. right? The key is make it, start using it. Let's start killing these viruses bacteria so we don't end up with all this super strain stuff that these pharmaceutical companies have been creating because of using these uh, anti anti antimicrobials, antibiotics that they use nowadays that are just allowing the viruses to morph into something else. This colloidal silver attacks them by the cell, through the cell walls. They have no immunity, can't build up an immunity. They're going to die one way or the other. Anyway, I thought I'd just show you a little something about those power supplies. So. You do not use salt water when making colloidal silver, although you want to because it starts off very, very slow. You know, we're talking about 110, 120, um, 80 milliamps, 70 milliamps versus almost no current whatsoever. Now here you're getting 10 and 20 milliamps here that are registering. This is not for that small a voltage, although it will. but the Okay, and then, whoops, I touched them together. Alright, now, the distilled water, zero. No conductivity. If you start out with this zero, how do you get colloidal silver to start making whenever you don't have enough voltage for it to start making? You use some of your previous batches, or you just wait a while, alright? Because putting the, uh, Putting the, the electrodes closer together really doesn't help. But even though you can't see, there is still, it's, there's a voltage that this won't even register, much less this big one. And it will travel through there. And so if you plug it in and you're not sure, leave your aerator off 
and watch for that little smoke trail. There'll be a little smoke trail traveling down from the positive lead off of your silver electrode. And when you see the little smoke trail, you'll know everything's working. You'll also know that that is the positive lead because it's going to be positive ions coming off of there. Because it's coming off the positive side. <laughs> okay. <coughs> I figured, <coughs> figured we'd put that to rest. I'm so sick and tired of other people saying that their silver... It works and other other people's don't because they do this and they do that and they got a little magnet spinning around and this and that and the other. It's all a bunch of hogwash. Use a voltage source, run it through two silver electrodes sitting in your solution of water and you will make colloidal silver. Period. You don't have to, so don't not make it because you figure you're not going to make the right kind. That's That would be a poor move. Alright, cheers guys.